Hello everyone and welcome to my review of the LEGO City Cargo Train. Now this is set 60198 and comes with 1,226 pieces, which is a decent amount of pieces until you think about the price point, which is $230, which is absolutely absurd. Now granted, you can currently get this for $180 if you find it on clearance, but wow, is it an expensive set. Track-wise, you do get a little bit of 33 pieces of track, that being 16 curved pieces, you get 16 straight pieces, and then also one curved piece, or not curved, but the split piece, which is interesting, but still, that's not going to be enough to fully satisfy everybody piece count wise for the tracks. Now, it is part of the Powered Up series, so it does have matching controller and battery, but in this set, you do get yourself a little bit of a small cart. You get yourself a wood cart, you get yourself a crane, you get yourself a bank cart, you get yourself the train, of course, and then also an overwatch tower. But wow, there's a lot to cover, which is good, but it does feel like it's heavily overpriced, this set. The back of this box does have a lot to offer. First of all, you've got the train in action up at the top with the LEGO Powered Up app being advertised as well because it is compatible with both the controller and the app. Now you do have a little bit of the stop station over there on the left, the robbers stealing from the bank car over down the bottom left. We also get uh, virtual instructions over there on the full left. Uh, we get another scene of all the figures. We get ourselves a little bit of glimpse onto the loading of the little snow jets snowmobile and then also a little bit of a look at the crane lifting some of the wood onto the little wood pallet that you get in the set and then there's also advertising for the various track components and of course the other train that is in this lineup a lot to cover in this set but we probably should get started with the minifigures first for the train operation site, we get two minifigures. One of these will act as your train operator. The other one you can use as your crane operator. Who you want to use for which position is up to you, or they can take shifts. It's really up to you. Now, the minifigure itself is mainly uh, colored in, these, in this dark olive. They are both the same, uh, train operator-wise, except their head and their helmet changes, uh, depending on which one you're looking at. So... They do have a little bit of a vest, which is orange and lime. It does have a little bit of the train logoing uh, right there on that side. But uh, they do also have a zipper, which you can see shining about in the center there. Moving on up to their head, they are pretty happy to be a train driver there. They do have a little bit of a beard in this dark tan coloring, and you can see the red hat. There is no double-sided face, however, you can see more prominently that train logo on the back as well as the continuation of that vest with its orange and lime coloring. So this minifigure is pretty nice, you know, it's pretty generic for a train operator, but you know, it's still a nice minifigure to have, especially since you need someone to drive your train. The female train operator has the same uniform, however, they change in their head and their hairpiece. As I mentioned before, they're still very happy to be a train operator, but instead of a hat, they have flowing hair with a hard hat on them. The hair is more prominently visible from the back of the minifigure. However, it does not conceal a second head. We also get two workers here. Now these are gonna be responsible for maintaining your station, while you're out and about operating your train because you can't just have a rundown station because otherwise you can't have any of your cargo getting from one place to another. So this first worker here has some navy blue pants with a bit more of an orange sweater on top. They do have a bar of kind of silvering over at the top but it is kind of hard to see because of the glare from the ring light. But they have a decent amount of pockets there with a belt. They also have some straps because it seems like this is more of like a work hoodie than anything with some gray gloves to boot as well. Pretty nice little uniform there. They have a little bit of a square shaped beard around their mouth with a little bit of a happy expression because they're just happy to be doing their job. Now they do have themselves a little bit of a nice hard hat there in red, no hair flowing out of the back, but it's nice nonetheless. Turning them around, we can see that grayish hood on the back 
with that again that stripe of the silver coming through around and also a back pocket with a walkie talkie so they've got themselves a little bit of communication as well which is good to see. Here's our second worker. Now they also have navy blue pants, however they differ in the torso, as this character has a vest instead of a hoodie. Now this vest is pretty nice, they also have a light blue undershirt, which matches quite well with the orange, which is the main coloration of that vest. Now they do have some silver yellow lines there going out, so that you can notice them uh, from a distance, probably so that you kind of can see them and maybe don't hit them with anything that might be harmful on the station. Now they do have a pocket and a name tag which is pretty nice to see so they're probably the face of this here station operation but they also have a whistle maybe to maybe to kind of warn people that might be approaching on the station or you know just to kind of have a whistle there maybe it's a train whistle and they're just gonna go blowing it from time to time and then you just hear <laughs> from a distance and you're very curious as to what's going on. But after all that whistle blowing, they are pretty happy and they do have themselves a bit of a blonde set of hair. Over on the back, you can see that reflective material again with that silver yellow. But if we take off their hair, we find absolutely nothing underneath the ponytail. Now our before final minifigure is going to be the security officer here. Now they've got themselves some dark green pants as well as a dark green hat. Now they've got themselves a smug expression with some very black tinted shades there. Now they do have themselves a special vest to block any incoming bullets. Not that there should be any guns really because they don't really distribute any of those in LEGO City. So it doesn't make too much sense but they're probably overprotective against any stray binoculars. But anyways they do have a white undershirt with a bit of a tie and they're just ready for anything at this point. They are ready with their security logo to protect the bank transport as they are the one driving it as well as they have a walkie talkie to make sure that they call anything in that appears to be suspicious. And our final minifigure is going to be here this bank robber here looking for that bank transport. Now they do have some gray pants there with a light gray dark gray combo for their kind of prisoner uniform underneath that black jacket. Now they do have a belt. And they also do have a little bit of scarring on their face, but they also have a bit of a stubble beard and a bit of anger happiness to them because they see the bank transport and they're about to strike. Now they do also have their kind of beanie hat there or crook hat with the brim on it. And they've got themselves some deadly binoculars which you do not want to get close to. But on the back they have a little bit of like a weird belting on either side and not too much else except for like a V upside down V fabric kind of lines. So nothing too special about this robber but that concludes our minifigures. This set has many things but it also has three special track elements. First of all it has two of these crossing logos that you can put on either side of your tracks where you place yourself this little ramp uh, where you can have vehicles drive across and hopefully not get run over. However, there are definitely some people that are going to want to do that with their train. Now, there's also this little roadblock here so that let's say you want to have yourself uh, one of your carts kind of just waiting at the end of the line, waiting for pickup. You can place them there and they won't really go anywhere. You do need more tracks to really fully realize this, but uh, at the moment, I'm not going to bring out an entire train set when the most of the table is already covered by this set. Our first vehicle here is going to be this forklift, which is in this yellowish color. Now, it does also have some black and some light gray, as well as some lights at the top and at the front. It has some steps so that you can go from the ground up and into the seat. And it's also got a very easy mechanism. Simply press down. You want to hold it down, pick up whatever you need to, bring it back up, and then load it onto this car here. So... Why not go after that next? There are two things specifically designed for this forklift. The first one is this little snowmobile on this little tan plate. What you do is you lower this first, then you drive up underneath it, getting as close as you can, collect it, and then you can shove it into the little cargo container that it goes onto. You might want to drop it down a little bit, 
and place it down and then it's in. The main container that it's housed in is a bit of red mixed in with two openings. It also has a little bit of a hook on top so that you can lift it up with your crane. Now the second box here on this pretty plain rail car, which doesn't have anything too special except for the two slots for these, is going to be our bank car. Now, if you go over to where the entrance is, it is going to ask you for a code. However, we don't really need that code because we can just open it right up. And you can see that currently it's a bit empty because that brings us to our next set of things that we need to cover. That being this fantastic looking bank transport. Now there is a seat for your driver there where you can put your security guard to help guard it. It does have a little bit of a license plate and some fun stuff, but the real magic happens behind these doors, which you can open up from the back to gain access from one side, or you can open up this top hatch to gain access to all the money and gold, slide it out, close it up, and as you can see, both sides have the bank transport. Take your money and gold and either give it to your robber or bring back your little bank car uh, so that your train can take it on a little bit of an adventure further away where this transport might not be able to get it to it. Lock it away, seal it with a code, and your bandit cannot get to it anymore. If bank hijinks and snowmobile transportation isn't your thing, you do also have a nice little lumber car with three logs here. You can, of course, use your crane to pick these up by these change and and then kind of lift them over to a lumber yard or just lift them onto the tray. It does make more sense to have yourself something that can actually get the lumber, but for the time being, it is a nice little flatbed that you can use to store a few things. You can put your forklift on here. Uh, you can fit yourself the bank transport, although it's going to be a little bit big. You can definitely fit it. And it's a little bit more multi-purpose than some of the other ones because it does have the railings. Be warned that the trees do fall apart from time to time. Our last car before we get into the train and the little lookout tower is going to be this here crane. Now it has two little settings, one to retract and then detract the hook itself, and then one to both raise and then lower the crane arm itself, which is pretty nice. It does rotate just by moving it, and it has two little uh, kind of control boxes to make sure that everything is working properly. Now, let's say you want to make sure that it's standing in place and doesn't really move about, because as you can see currently, it's going all over the place. Simply what you do is you take out uh, these little grips on either side, push them flat down so that this little stud is standing still, and then it becomes way harder to move. It still moves a lot, a little bit, but it is far more grounded than it was previously, making for a little bit of an easier time using this. Now, if you want to access the little bit of the compartment for the person to operate it, you simply lift up the crane, take off the roof, put your minifigure inside, put the roof back as it was, then you're going to want to drop the crane down by twisting it downward or towards yourself. And there you go. You're ready to go do some lifting with this crane. Now we've covered a lot of this set already, but there's still this massive tower, which does have a little bit of a maintenance rack with a bit of a wrench and also a, se a section to attach onto the tracks if you do so choose. So if I take a piece of tracks here, this is going to be the one with the dead end. You can simply clip it on and now it's more level and everything. So it does have a bit of a ladder that you can use to climb up. It can just also act as an outstretch, so you can have a bit of a tightrope or a ladder leading up. If you open the door, you can access the control room, which doesn't have too much inside except for a coffee machine and a little bit of course detailings that you can type into the computer, as well as a switch. Now to access the switch, you can either have it be stop or set to go, you know, give someone the green light to continue, or tell someone don't go this way because there's a blockade. So there's a lot of versatility that you can do with this tower. It's nothing too special, but it's a nice inclusion to have nonetheless. It's nothing crazy like the previous station, which had a full on loading bay, but it's still better than nothing. And finally, the moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> the train is here finally showing itself after a while. Now, 
For this train, we have a little bit of space, two little sides to put yourself one of your train operators there, and then another spot to put another train operator there. So you can have both sides being operated on. So if you want to go have some forward motion, you can. If you want to have some backwards motion, you can. Or you can just have uh, one of them unable to see the other direction and just have someone in this crane. So there's a little bit of stuff that you can do with this train. But there is a little bit of difference inside of here that you're just going to have to wait and see. Now I've already paired the trains, but in order to pair them you simply just hold this button and hold the train button and they should eventually pair to the same color. Currently they're this yellowish color and now that we have them there we can go ahead and select and there it goes. Funnily enough, it just kind of crashes, but if we had some actual tracks, it would have gone along them. But to accidents on the rails, all you gotta do is blow that whistle. <coughs> and that wraps up this episode. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.